Um, so thanks everyone. Uh, let me let me start this conversation by saying thanks to the EC Council team for inviting me into this esteemed uh, conference that they are arranging today. Thank you so much for that. Um, and I would also like to thank all the audience uh, for sparing your time and coming on to attending this conference. I know uh, I was looking at some of the demographics of the uh, of the attendees that are joining this session. Uh, looks like some people are joining from all three continents, uh, be it US, Europe, and, and others in the Asia Pac. So thank you so much for that. For some, uh, this time around may, may be an early morning. For some, it could be a late night and then hence forth. So thanks for that. Uh, without any delay and respecting your time, let me start this presentation. So today I'm going to be uh, talking about um, and, and sharing my experience on the IoT. So we'll give you a quick brief of what is IoT, uh, what is the future looks like for IoT, um, and what are the relevant essentials or the security elements that we have when we talk about the IoT. In the end, I'm also going to be sharing a case study, uh, which I have, uh, I'll be sharing based on my, ex my previous experience. And I'll be giving you a few tips as to how you can really go and build the secure IoT system in, in, in some place. And I'll also be giving you a few tips. Uh, these are all generic tips based on my experience, uh, which I think are essential for you to be successful in the career. Thanks. All right, um, let me move on, uh, move on with the IoT. Uh, as you may all be hearing a lot about IoT, Internet of Things, uh, this is kind of a buzzword. You may be hearing about autonomous cars, you may be hearing about uh, the connected factories, you may be hearing about uh, the variables that we are having. These are all connected to the internet, the smartphones. So uh, if you really go back to the definition of IoT, the definition I've just extracted from the Wikipedia, um, this looks very simple and, and modest. So it says that IoT basically is nothing but a network of physical objects. Uh, that is nothing but things and which are embedded with sensors, softwares, and other technologies for the purpose of connecting and exchanging the data. So this is important. So one that IoT device connects and the other is it also goes and exchange the data. Why I'm, I'm emphasizing on these two words is because the moment something is getting connected onto the internet and they start sharing some data, that's where you would be able to easily relate this to the cybersecurity. Uh, and also it does uh, the data communication with the other devices and the systems over the internet. Um, there are a few examples. Um, uh, and in the examples, if you look at, I think uh, in uh, these are the four categories that I have try to create and indeed four categories I have tried to summarize this into two, uh, industrial and consumer. So let's talk about the consumer first. Uh, when we talk about the consumer IoT, this is uh, something that is touching to us directly in day-to-day -day life. So say for example, the wearables, if we are wearing the smart watches, uh, if you are having the smartphones, if you are having the TVs, which are also connecting to Internet, these are all the examples of Internet of Things. Similarly, at our home, um, we have, we now have appliances which are IoT enabled. Those appliances are basically uh, going and sending all the data with respect to the availability of the appliance, with respect to the uh, usage pattern of the appliance, with respect to uh, how the appliance is behaving at, at some point of time in, in the whole day. So all of these data it is generating and sending onto the servers. Uh, similarly, uh, the home monitoring systems have now started coming, which are also IoT enabled. Um, you have home automation systems, uh, which basically automate everything. So imagine if someone's home is completely automated with IoT, and what if that hacks? So your entire privacy and everything goes for a task. So we'll discuss these things a little later. Um, if you talk about uh, split the coin to industrial, uh, in industrial we see uh, heavy machineries, uh, those are coming in with IoT 
enabled the transportation system. Uh, you may be hearing driverless cars, the autonomous cars. These are all the great examples of IoT. Smart cities, uh, in some parts of the world, those are already there. Uh, in the developing world, these are also getting created, which is going to be completely IoT-based uh, cities. So everything uh, will be just on the phone. Um, similarly, when you look at uh, the other part of the industrial, which is nothing but into the factories or plants, the, all the connected machines uh, are coming in, the automation systems are coming in, the, if you look at the healthcare, um, all the uh, newer devices that are coming in, those are also going and generating a lot of data. You can go and control those uh, devices remotely. So, so there are a lot of a uh, lot of examples. These are just a few, but there are a lot of examples that we see today. Those are there uh, from uh, on the IoT space, be it the consumer or the industrial. And as the world is emerging, uh, the newer technologies are going on, and we have seen with pandemic, uh, this COVID-19 pandemic, uh, the technology adoption has really gone up so high. So we'll see that. Uh, the IoT devices would also be adopting at a, at a very fast pace as you move forward. So even companies are, uh, the people are actually going and talking about connecting all the trees, um, connecting all the towers, uh, even the street lights. Um, there are few cases uh, in UAE uh, that, that I've seen uh, even the, the plants that they are having. Uh, those have also started getting connected with the IoT, so that uh, that gives a, a very nice way of uh, ensuring that uh, that device basically goes and tell how much water do you really need to put in on a particular day, uh, when does it need it, when it doesn't need it. So it is going and saving a lot of water for the country. So we, we will see a lot of interesting cases. Uh, those are there, and those will get emerged. And there's going to be a tremendous value out of it. All right, the future of IoT and its global growth. Uh, so the future of IoT looks really phenomenal. So uh, we are expecting, uh, that there's a search done by uh, Machina Research. Uh, they're expecting that the IoT revenue by 2025 is gonna be three trillion. So this really speaks a lot. Uh, three trillion is a big number. Uh, and then if you talk about the number of devices that we will be having connecting to IoT, you're expecting 25 billion by 2025. So in the next five years from now, we are actually expecting 25 billion IoT devices worldwide. That's going to be a huge, huge number. And imagine the kind of complexity, the kind of challenges that it will all bring onto the entire world. Uh, if we look at the IoT market, this is all, again, uh, will be going at a very fast pace. Uh, if you look at the trend, 17, 18, 19, 20, and then immediately um, starting from 2021, I think it's going to be growing at a very fast pace. All right. Um, so if, if IoT is going to be such huge, and if it is going to be so much important and will be integrated into our day-to-day -day life, we don't see security in IoT. We don't see um, anything rich in security in IoT. And I'll just give you a simple illustration of the IoT security here. Um, so as you see on the screen, uh, when we say IoT, it is Internet of Things, but there's no security here. And which, which is what these, these, these gentlemen are, uh, are having the conversation that, do you know the S in IoT for security? They say, no, there's no S in IoT. And the other gentleman says, yes, exactly, that's my point. While S is not uh, there in front of it, but this is exactly inside into it, and it has to go into it. Without having S in IoT, the IoT would be meaningless. So IoT needs to be secured. If we just put the Internet of Things, put the autonomous systems, put all of these uh, great technologies onto the planet, and imagine if we are not securing them, what uh, repercussions it may have. Again, giving a very simple example, say if one, one's home is 
connected with all the IoT devices? And what if that home is not secure? So what impact it could have? If What if some hacker gets onto your router and then, uh, then he will be able to practically control everything. One, he will be able to monitor what all you are doing. Uh, he can actually go remotely, shut down your front doors. He can shut down your washing machine. He can shut down your TVs. He can do whatever that he wants or she wants to do. So security has to be a very key element in, uh, in the IoT. And this has to be really taken very, very seriously. Um, these are some of the hacks that we all have seen uh, in, in the last couple of years. So while uh, IoT was at a very nascent stage, uh, people did not thought much about it. Uh, but with these hacks, I think everybody has realized that IoT security needs to be taken very seriously. And we'll give you just one example that uh, if you talk about, say, Google Home, Alexa, Siri, uh, these are all of things that that can be easily controlled or taken over, not by getting into those devices, but even by using the laser light. Um, so I'm sure you will be able to find out uh, that there are good illustration of this attack given in the YouTube as well. Maybe you can go spend some time, find out how these things can be done. But uh, all that I'm trying to say is that um, IoT hacks are not uh, not that difficult as well. Uh, similarly, you may you may all have heard about Fox Beacon Vehicle Hacked by a Wi-Fi spot feature. So it had a Wi-Fi spot feature, hotspot feature, and with that functionality, uh, the attackers could actually get onto the vehicle and, and they could hack this. Uh, some more examples, um, and these are all again popular examples that I'm I'm throwing out to you so that you all can relate why security is so much important for IoT. Um, you may have heard about the OLED Wi-Fi Baby Hut Monitor. That was an app which basically used to go and monitor the heart of, uh, of the baby. And attackers actually got into this particular application and then they were able to do a lot of bad things. Um, then uh, in the healthcare industry, uh, this was also a big news that the ransomware attacked uh, one of the hospital, which actually resulted into the death of the patient. Um, Fitbit, we all, most of people uses that. Uh, it also allowed this spyware on official app store. So this was also a good research that was publicly available. Um, uh, the Jeep hack, you all may have heard it long time back, um, way back in 2015, the uh, I, uh, team of IBM could actually control the entire Jeep. Uh, they could really put the Jeep off the road onto uh, from the highway, and they could actually go control the speed and everything what was possible. So these are just the same uh, simple and, and few examples here, but I'm sure when you navigate to the web, you'll find out so many other hacks that have happened, are happening, and attackers are not leaving any stone unturned to not hack any of the, these emerging technologies. All right, let, let me move on. Um, uh, so let me give you a brief snapshot of what are the IoT ecosystem is, uh, give you some basics. Uh, uh, so, and, and if, if I were to start the basics, so um, if you look at the IoT in principle, it has got three core elements. Uh, first, it has got the edge device, which is there at the bottom. Uh, these are nothing, but these are really the IoT devices that we see in our day-to-day -day life. It could be washing machine, it could be um, smart TV, uh, it could be a sensor, placed in any of the device at our home or, or in, in our locality. Um, so these are all the IoT devices. Ultimately, what they do is they go and connect to the gateway. Now, if we are at our home, the gateway is the router. If we are outside, there's some IoT device connected there. Uh, the gateway would be the respective gateway for that particular device. So the second element for the IoT ecosystem is the gateway. And third is really the cloud platform. So which is where uh, all of these devices, by using the gateway, they are going and sending all the data. Uh, again, taking back the example of, uh, say, 
uh, one of the uh, one of the machines say for example if you are having it at home if it is going and sending a lot of data so that data by using the gateway it will ultimately be going and storing onto the cloud so uh, it could be azure it could be aws there are many more platforms that have got created on iot so all of that will go and get stored so these are the three key elements that that are there in the iot ecosystem and once you understand it uh, then it will be easy for you to uh, chalk down uh, as to how do we need to secure all of these three so just securing iot device would not solve your problem just securing gateways would not solve the problem or just securing the cloud platform would not solve the problem so it has to be looked at holistically um, all three components and the communication medium that we are having between all of these three and all of them needs to be secured just uh, just to summarize so these iot devices are very small embedded systems at the bottom uh, they have got the firmwares then routers are nothing but the gateways they have got firmwares typically linux uh, so if it's if they have got some vulnerabilities people can go hack them um, and then uh, therefore it is important to vulnerability analysis on iot devices but how do you do that is a question we will cover that later on and then uh, what I described is the cloud platform. So if cloud platform is not configured correctly, that could also give you a lot of issues. Okay, um, so why, um, again, a few more insights as to why IoT network security. So like we have discussed in the previous slide, the device, no device is fully secure. So these are very small devices which really does not have the operating system like what we see in our machines or on phones. These are small devices with small RAM, small processing power. So it is very difficult to really find out how do we really secure it. So one, do we need to secure the firmware? Then the communication that it is having, how do you ensure that uh, the communication it is having gets secured? So all of those challenges are there. Uh, so uh, that that's one. The other is the IoT security is currently limited. So uh, the IoT security is still evolving. There are a lot of a uh, lot of things that are taking place in this particular domain. A uh, lot of technologies are getting implemented, and people are coming up with the newer uh, technologies to ensure that IoT gets secure. Um, the investments on security are limited in the IoT security space, but as we move forward, we will see that the investments would also be uh, going high. Uh, and the functionalities before security is also limited at this point in time. Uh, but but the real physical threats are there uh, on health and safety, safety because we are all using all of these IoT devices in our personal lives these days. Um, this is basically IoT threat landscape. I'm not sure how much visible it is, but just to give you a quick uh, summary of it. So, assuming that in the middle, these are the threats, um, and then those threats are again further divided. So, first is say physical attack. So, somebody can actually go and physically attack uh, some of the IoT device. Say, for example, uh, somebody can come come to your home connect onto your Wi-Fi, um, just being a guest, and after that got onto your Wi-Fi and then try to access and control some of the devices. Or if you have, um, say, a LAN ports at your home or wherever those IoT devices are, somebody can actually go connect um, the PC onto the LAN ports, scan all the open ports, scan the vulnerabilities, and get onto uh, destructing those IoT devices. Um, the other is um, one is that these physical attacks the other is uh, simply uh, once once you have the access or once you know that these are the potential iot devices that you want to target uh, you can do various type of attacks you can do ddos you can do many other things to create the outages you can also go and uh, do uh, I mean, uh, if, if the natural disaster happens, though, that also becomes a threat for IoT devices. Um, eavesdropping um, or, or uh, interception hacking, uh, that's also possible. Um, if, if the system fails or malfunction, that's also a threat to IoT devices. Um, 
if, if somebody is trying to spoof uh, ICMP flooding, uh, like I said, so DDoS, malware, um, th those are also the things that, that are possible to attack. Um, you can exploit the vulnerabilities, uh, counterfeit them, target attacks, modification of information if it is exchanging the data, um, that information can be modified, uh, the privacy can be compromised uh, once you get on to attacking those systems. All right, um, the, the next thing I want to discuss is the IoT security attacks and challenges. So uh, attacks possibilities, as we discussed, um, the attacks over the internet IoT ecosystem. So the sensors or the IoT devices, those uh, those are also, those can be attacked. So for example, once you attack the sensor, you can actually go drain the entire battery of pacemakers. Uh, the communication, the communication is not just limited to the LAN or Wi-Fi Ethernet. Uh, it's also related to Bluetooth. Some devices connect to Bluetooth. So you can actually go intercept, or attackers can actually go and intercept the Bluetooth traffic. Uh, the data integrity is uh, is a big concern. Uh, if, if the data is being tampered along the way, that can also result into the entire decision making process. Uh, the information privacy, uh, which is a simple example of the toy app that I was showing you. Uh, uh, this is uh, this is basically eavesdrop on the children. Uh, this was a big news. So the challenges are basically. Uh, there's a large attack surface and widespread deployment. Uh, there are limited device resources today. Uh, there are lack of standards and regulations. Uh, safety and security processes needs to be integrated. Uh, security by design is not a top priority. So the priority for anybody today, uh, uh, if I say to a large extent, is uh, to push the technology into the market and try to win some early gains and security is being treated as a later step. Later step. So uh, that is not by design. So if somebody hacks into it, then people get aware and then they think, oh yeah, I need to go and secure these devices as well. But uh, typically, ideally, if we, we, we are all from IT industry and if you look at uh, the basic philosophy of how we are all going and designing the IT systems, the data centers, security has been built from day one. So similarly in the IoT, uh, the security has to be built from day one. The day it happens, we will see some ease uh, in this particular space. Um, expertise is really one of one of the key, key area I want to focus. Uh, not many people are really aware of the IoT security and and what are the different protocols? What are the different ecosystem that we have talked about? The three aspects are there and how to really go and safeguard all of these three aspects um, in, in, in a single pane of class. So people may be thinking about securing just the IoT on the edge or thinking to secure just the IoT at the gateway or maybe at the cloud security. So how do you integrate all of these three things and secure all of these three remains uh, a very big challenge. So that means somebody will have to look at it holistically, not by vertical domain. Um, applying security updates. So the, the other important thing is say, for example, if you compare a, a router with a small IoT device, a router is easy to do security updates because it has got very high processing power. It has got an operating system. You can actually go and update it. But since IoT device is very small, how do you update it? Uh, the uh, one option could be over the air, but how do you ensure that um, the over the air update would happen? Uh, the other big challenge is that uh, who needs to own the security of it? Say, for example, I'm a manufacturing, uh, I'm a manufacturer of IoT device. I go and sell that IoT device to a consumer. He goes and takes that to his home. He connects onto his Wi-Fi. Now. My IoT device may be secure and my IoT platform may be secure, but if his Wi-Fi system is not secure, somebody got into his Wi-Fi and then try and damage that IoT device that I have supplied. So who's going to be responsible to 
uh, or, or against whom the lawsuit would be filed? Would it be to the manufacturer who has built that product or to the person who has been using this? So again, these are all gray areas at the moment. Uh, the other thing is, say, if, uh, another example, say if I am the manufacturer, I go sell it. And uh, after that, say, uh, I give three years of AMC as part of the initial purchase. Now, what happens after three years? Who is going to take care of the security of that particular system? Uh, as a consumer, is he or she going to take the AMC of the IoT security separately? I think these are some of the things that needs to be thought through, which I don't think people have thought through it yet, but these are some of the challenges that, that we see those are there and those needs to be addressed as you move forward. Um, the other thing is the insecure development and unclear liabilities. So liabilities I've already covered and insecure is also one of the thing that when, when, when an application or the ecosystem or, or the device itself is getting developed, how do we make, need to make sure that those are developed by security? All right, I'll give you two attack scenarios um, uh, of the IoT. So one, uh, this is the first one, uh, which is basically on, based on the Wi-Fi. So this is an attacker who is trying to get onto the Wi-Fi. And the moment he gets onto the Wi-Fi, then after that, um, this person would go and gather the specific information of the network. Uh, try to find out uh, the vulnerabilities into the network. The moment uh, the attacker knows that, he'll try to exploit the vulnerability, compromise the network, do the backdoor installation, update the systems with modified firmware. Um, I think it is easier for everyone to understand it now based on the solar winds attack that has happened. Uh, otherwise, before solar winds, if I were to explain you, people would still scratch their head as to how this is possible. Uh, but now we, we see that those back backend codes can also be modified by the attacker. So it's easy for all of you to understand. And then uh, once you have done it, uh, you can easily, the attacker will actually go and compromise the device, take the remote system. And by doing this, uh, the entire IoT devices will be controlled by the attacker. So this is one scenario. Um, the other scenario is uh, botnet, botnet or commands injection based. Um, so uh, this is basically you go to, to a physical port, scan, scan the port, access to the IoT device, do a code and command injection, uh, obtainment of admin privileges, connection to device for CNC, um, then execution of the malicious script. Uh, the script deletes itself and runs in memory, uh, spread and attacks over vulnerable devices, and then attack controls the botnet from command and con uh, control center. So this is another scenario, and there could be many more scenarios uh, by which the IoT attacks are possible. The one I showed you by using the laser lights. Um, this is quite interesting um, and one of my favorite slides. Um, and if you just go to Shodan, um, shodan.io, um, just do a Google search and you'll be surprised the moment you got into Shodan, uh, this is a real snapshot that I've taken by my search. Uh, if you go and just click on plant there, you will see so many IP addresses of the plants. When I say plants, means these are the uh, IoT or, or connected devices. Those are located inside some of the manufacturing facilities. You'll be surprised that the IP addresses are openly available. Uh, what what does that mean? So basically, as an attacker, somebody would actually take the IP address, just try to run the vulnerability. And, and might uh, exploit that. So, but this is a scaling situation. Uh, if you look at it, uh, this is the world map in US alone. So the total result it gave me was 2685 a few days back. Uh, US alone, it has 804, Germany 515, Italy 220, China 100, Russia 83, 
and then it also tells you the services. So services means the manufacturer um, of, of this particular devices. So Siemens alone is 860, and then the others follows. So, uh, and uh, not just that, it also gives you a lot of other information, like for example, the serial number of the module, the module name, the firmware, so all of these information comes handy just searching a plant there. You are not doing anything else. I mean, nobody has done anything. At least I did not do when I uh, looked into it. I just clicked on, I just typed in plant, hit on search, and these are the information that came from Shodan. So a lot of information is available, widely open. Uh, there are a few websites which basically goes and shows you all the IP CCTV cameras, live CCTV cameras, those are available. You go enter, uh, I mean, just click on that, it will show you the live streams of the camera. So, so there has to be, and imagine this is the situation today. When we are talking about moving on to 2025 and increasing the number of IoT devices to a very exploit number, then imagine what kind of situation and what sort of map and the numbers we will have by 2025 or 2030 uh, as, as these, the penetration goes high. So I think this is uh, definitely a very serious, uh, very serious topic, and and I think uh, a serious work is going on, and uh, more and more this needs to be thought through. Okay, um, two more things that are left in this presentation. So one is the real life case study, uh, basis on this smart factory. And in the end, I'll give you a few tips. So I've I've just given you this. Uh, this case study, this is uh, basically a smart factory. Uh, if you look at it, uh, in, a, in a factory, there are key processes. So I've listed down few key processes. I'm not going into the detail, otherwise it, this itself would become few hours of a presentation. So in, in, the, in the factory or the plant, uh, typically they have got a loading area where the raw material comes and then uh, that gets loaded. Uh, then that material comes into the manufacturing line where the material goes in and the manufacturing start. Once the manufacturing is done, then it goes into the assembly line where the uh, different part of the manufacturing gets assembled. And then from there, it goes into the testing and quality assurance lab uh, where the testing happens and the quality assurance uh, related aspect happens. So once the material is quality, uh, certified, then it goes into the packaging area to do the packaging. And then after that, it goes into the warehouse for the dispatch and the actual dispatch process happens from there to either to um, another warehouse or to a distributor. Uh, and then the material goes to the consumers. So imagine if this is a smart factory and all of these processes are connected by using some machines, and those machines are having the IP addresses. Those machines are connected onto the network, and those machines are accessible uh, within that particular uh, within that particular factory. So, what impact it could have if somebody gets onto the factory? I'll just give you two three examples. Say, for example, somebody gets onto the uh, smart factory, and after that goes into this section testing and quality assurance uh, or uh, and in the testing and quality assurance uh, say if um, I'll give you the example any 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 example so any any device you think about say for example you are having a heater uh, now the heater is supposed to operate at um, certain temperature in the quality assurance what if an attacker goes into it and increase that quality parameter from that temperature to say 30 more degrees Celsius. So that means um, you will still accept the product if it is going to that particular level. Uh, but if that continues for a long time uh, at the consumer home, what if it's burnt? So this could have a very serious impact. Uh, the other impact could be um, Say if you have gotten into the access of uh, this smart factory, what if somebody goes remotely and shut it down? 
the kind of impact it could have, or if you go fine tune or, or change some of the parameters in the manufacturing line, um, when the manu in the manufacturing line, if uh, if the manufacturing manufacturing uh, is supposed to happen by X parameter, if you add X plus two, then the final product itself will get changed. And imagine if even if this continues for a few days, the type of product that in the end it will have will be very different than what somebody had to do or had initially thought about it. So, so uh, this is an example of smart factory. Um, and in the smart factory, I've explained you the processes. And in these processes, I've just given you a few examples. So um, the idea was that uh, I give you this so that you understand what are the sensitivity around the security it has and why it is important to secure each and every element of all the processes here. I'll give you a few tips. So if let's say somebody is uh, designing a smart factory, so how do you need to make sure that the smart factory is built securely? Um, let me start. Uh, with the basics. Uh, number one, when you are designing the network for smart factory, you will have to have two different networks in the factory. One for IoT, one for IT, and the other is OT, or you can say IoT, operational technology. So you need to have two different networks so that all the core processes related aspects remains into one network that does not interact with the IT network that you typically have. Then uh, a basic principle, restrict all the ports in OT network. So all the ports that are connected onto the machine, um, say for example, if you have um, say 50 ports, out of that 50 ports, you only have connected 10 devices. We have to make sure that the remaining 40 ports needs to be disabled. Um, the third is that even though those 10 ports are enabled, those 10 ports needs to be allowed with the MAC address. So say for example, those 10 devices are supposed to connect onto those respective ports. So note down the MAC address of all of those devices and make sure in the network switch goes and allows those specific uh, network MAC address only. Um, if, if you can implement NAC in the OT network, uh, there will be even a superior advantage. Uh, so basically, it will allow you to look at all the possible uh, traffic that is trying to come in. Um, anybody who is trying to gain the uh, unauthorized access, it will, number one, help you to give you that visibility. Number two, it will also go and control that. So you can implement that. Uh, you can also implement some of the monitoring systems. So some of the advanced SIEM, I won't name any of those, but uh, there are a lot of AI ML based monitoring systems in place, which can actually go and monitor, create the pattern of all the traffic that is happening into that network. And if there is any abnormality happens, say for example, um, in a day between um, these 10 devices are sending say five MB of the traffic to the server. Uh, suddenly someday I think this five MB becomes five GB. So those abnormalities can be detected and send it out. Um, then have a next generation firewall between the IoT, uh, IT and OT network. So uh, there would be some elements, like I said, so these devices will still need to send out the data. And when they send out the data, that uh, data will need to go into the server. That server will be an IT network. So you have to make sure that when you're connecting or when a traffic is going between the IT and OT network, there's a close monitoring and control being put in place by using some of the best firewalls. Um, you should ensure that you are not giving any incoming access to the OT network. Uh, if there is a need, say somebody wants to remotely troubleshoot, that needs to be allowed very strictly by taking all the due diligence approvals and for a very limited time. Outgoing access from OT to IT, again, should be on need basis after complete due diligences and the approvals. Um, uh, a next generation SOC, which can actually not just go and monitor your IT, but OT network as well. And make sure all the OT systems that you have uh, are patched regularly. This is a very key element. So say for example, some of these systems that you have, uh, say a robot or some of the PLCs or some of the MES, CARA systems, if, if they are not 
patched properly. While you have done all of these things, but if they are not patched, that means they may have some vulnerabilities. And if somebody gets onto it, it would be easy for uh, anyone to get and, and hack those vulnerabilities so or exploit those vulnerabilities. So make sure, uh, I mean, these are all, while these are all basics, but what I have seen based on my experience that people tend to do a lot of great things in the life, but they skip some of the basics. And um, I, I really feel that uh, basics are some of the building stones for anyone, be it, us, be it technology. If you're following the basics, then that will actually help you to build a very strong foundation. All right. Um, yeah, I think that's it from me. Uh, that's a very long lecture that I have given you on the IoT. Um, few last tips that I would like to give you on the personal life um, to be successful. So these are a few tips based on my experience and some of these things I am I use it uh, in my life. So first and foremost, uh, no matter at what age or what level in the career you are at, some people may be at the beginning, some may have gone into the C-suite, uh, but learning is something that one should not stop. So if you are not learning, someone else in the world is learning. And uh, the opportunity comes to the people who are prepared. So you have to make sure that uh, we, are, we are spending some time in our day-to-day -day busy life, but going and spending for the learning. Uh, the second is uh, if somebody is studying for beach for academic purposes or for attaining some certifications or something, study hard. Um, there, there is no escape to it. There are no excuses to it. Um, as we are seeing uh, today's world, um, this is basically a technology world. Um, and people who, who are well equipped with the technologies that are being day to day, this is the initiation stage. Those are going to be, they will sustain for a very, very long time. So this is the right opportunity for all of us to really go learn all the emerging technologies, which depending on your subject and the interest, uh, please go learn all the emerging technology, be it AI, ML, be it uh, cybersecurity, be it uh, the network security, whatever stream that you like to, please go and learn. This is really, really mandatory. Uh, again, attain certifications wherever this is applicable in your study pattern or learning pattern. Go and attain the certifications from the renowned organizations. Uh, it helps to prove your credentials uh, to the potential employer. Uh, the next point is be sincere. Um, so I've seen people who try to be low in life, be sincere. Uh, they tend to be more successful than the others. Um, strive for excellence. This is uh, one of the very important points. So uh, you should not try to try to study because you want to get onto the certification. You should not try to study because you want to earn a particular degree or, or really want to show off to the world that, look, hey, I've gone and done it. Uh, look for the excellence. So whatever you're studying, make sure that you get it 100%. Make sure that nobody else in the world knows that subject better than you. I think that's the simple meaning of excellence. And the 